right. Well, um, welcome everybody to the cloud session of today's summit. Uh, my name is Fahad Qureshi. I run cloud sales here for Cumulo, and we're here to talk to you about building your cloud strategy. Um, I want to introduce a few folks that I have on my panel today, and then I'll talk about the agenda, and we'll get right into it. But I'd like to start with Ben Gittenstein, someone I've uh, been uh, worked with almost my Ben, it was about six years, right? Feels like just a day. Oh, uh, you're too kind. Day. You're too kind. Ben runs our head of product, and Ben, just uh, tell the tell the audience a little bit about yourself and say hi. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Ben Gittenstein. I run the product organization here at Cumulo. Um, so I, it's my job to take credit for what uh, really smart engineers at Cumulo build, and uh, that's that's what I do for a living. Um, but I, uh, I'm really grateful to all of you for spending a couple minutes of your day with us today. I hope we can make this session valuable for you and that we can answer some questions and give you some great stuff to think about. Outstanding, Ben. Thanks. We're glad to have you uh, join us today. Uh, next on deck is uh, my good pal, Keith Nargi. Uh Keith, how are you doing, buddy? Very good, Fahad. Thanks. So how Keith, are you? Keith is our CTO for Americas and uh, uh, someone that uh, started with me almost seven years ago to the day. I tell that to everyone that wants to hear it. And uh, um, you know, like I said, glad to have you here with me today. Keith, tell us a little about yourself. Oh, I like long walks on the beach. And, <laughs> uh, no, I uh, I have been with Cumulo for like Fahad said seven years, uh, and I've been I've been working in a lot of different fronts here, mainly uh, walking with working with customers to help them understand how Cumulo can fit into their environment. Deep dives into our technology. I really am a big fan of the media and entertainment space. Um, I have a background in working with that space from previous jobs that I've had, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking about how. Cumulo, specifically Cumulo in the cloud, can help our m and &E customers really accelerate their workloads. Outstanding, Keith. Thanks. I'm glad to have you here, buddy. And our special guest of the day is uh, David Salik. He is the worldwide m and &E storage specialist for AWS. David, welcome to the party. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. Can you tell us a little bit about your background, uh, David, and you know what you do? Sure for so i uh, been working in media and entertainment, storage focused space for, good grief, uh, close to 20 years. And uh, 10 of those years I was on the manufacturer side. So uh, that first happened in 2010 with, uh, with Isilon before they were acquired. I uh, worked with them for five years alongside Keith and then switched over to two other vendors, uh, went over to HPC space for a little bit with Panassas, and then back to media and entertainment with Pixit Media, which uh, runs a licensed version of GPFS, um, and then decided to come over to the cloud side, and I've been nearly two years here with AWS. And uh, the fascinating thing about being on this panel is one of the very first lessons I learned when I started working with good storage vendors is, it takes 10 years to make a good file system. Guess what? Cumulo is about to celebrate their 10th year. Yeah, in 2022. Very excited to see you enter the glorified, amazing space of a really strong file system vendor because it's been a very impressive journey to watch Cumulo take. Uh, seeing many of you, Ben, Keith, others uh, push through hard to make it this far. Um, it's a lot of impressive work and it's a, very, uh, it's a very distinct pleasure to be here with you on this panel talking about that connection between us on the cloud side and you on the storage side. Love it, David. And we're gonna be asking some real cool questions when we get to the panel uh, uh, session of this, um, of this, uh, the panel discussion portion of this session. So real quickly, let's just run through the agenda here. So um, first thing I'd like to say is that um, there is a chat box available. So I see there's always uh, some questions in there. And, and the wonderful thing is we're having crowdsourcing. So you guys are answering your own questions, which is fantastic. But please, um, please add your questions there. And we'll, we'll make sure when we get to the back half of the session, that we take some time to, to get through some of those questions that we have uh, listed there. So um, we're gonna we're gonna turn over here in, in just about uh, thirty seconds to uh, Ben Gittenstein, who will give us a cumulo overview and then kind of walk us through the product strategy, and we'll kind of uh, uh, wrap it up with this team that just got introduced. We have you know we want to just have sort of an open dialogue. We have a couple of questions um, about you know just you know burning the questions about uh, about cloud about AWS, about Cumulo in the M&E space, and we we'll want to get their different perspectives on it. 
And like I said, we'll wrap up and uh, and move over to the next steps and make sure we answer any questions here. So with that said, looking forward to uh, getting through here the next uh, 35 minutes. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Ben Ginstein. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. No, no that, that was me. I got ahead of myself there. Thanks, Fahad. So I'm going to try to get through uh, slides pretty fast. But uh, folks, feel free to jump onto the chat and ask questions. I'm happy to divert and answer questions. The goal here is really we got a pretty diverse group of folks in the in the session today. And I want to make sure we all have sort of the same level set understanding of how Cumulo thinks about the market, how we think about the m and &E space and the problems that we solve and what our product does. Uh, so if if you feel already pretty familiar with Cumulo, this might feel a little rudimentary. If you're newer to us, this might even feel like not quite enough information. If you want to go deeper on what our product does, I'll just say like I would reach out directly to Bahad and Keith. They love getting on the phone with customers to go deeper on what our product does, get you set up, get you started looking at the product. I'm a big believer in, in these slides and talking about it, but nothing is the same as, as actually using it and seeing it. So if you do want to go deeper, I would just really strongly encourage you to reach out to us and get set up with a demo so you can see the thing in action. Um, okay, so with that said, uh, here's the central problem we are super interested in at Cumulo and to David's point have been interested for 10 years without a pivot is the problem of large scale unstructured data on premises and in the public cloud. We named the company Cumulo from the beginning because it's named after a Cumulo Nimbus cloud, which we thought of as sort of the, or the original problem of data, a very large scale data problem that could reside both on premises or in the public cloud. What's happening with that data? Well, the first thing that's happening is it's sprawling exponentially. I was just looking at data from IDC um, for our, as part of our annual executive strategies, sort of planning for the year ahead. I'm sure some of you are going into budget season yourselves. Um, so we're doing our budget planning and we were looking at IDC data. Over the next five years, unstructured data is projected to grow by 5x the rate that unstructured data budgets are expected to grow. So in other words, for every uh, five terabytes of data created, only one new dollar is added for budget. And that's a really big problem for organizations. Data is growing faster than the resources allocated to manage it. The second, and, and that's just the dollar side, right? The whole, there's a whole other side, which is like, okay, how do I actually organize and manage massive scale unstructured data, not a simple problem. The second problem that's happening in unstructured data, the way things have changed is how it's used. So unstructured data is now part of a much faster, higher performance set of workflows than it ever was before. I mean, think just about for this audience, think just about what, how much compute you all use to run a render workflow. It's exponentially greater than what you used 10 years ago. And that's just like, that's just a fact. It's nothing Cumul can take credit for, but it's a reality. And then the last one is the cloud. We, when, when all of our pipelines and sort of original architectures were built 15 years ago, the cloud as a place that rendering, that movies were made as an example, was an idea at best. And now it's a reality. And the question becomes for all of us, how do you take advantage of what AWS offers as a way to actually make a movie faster? So all of those are problems that really didn't exist when the last set of file systems reached their pinnacle 10 years ago. And as David points out, they we understood all of those as problems 10 years ago when we started this journey. Uh, so what does that mean in terms of like tangible experience? Well. The way all, when we talk to customers, the way they experience those problems firsthand is feeling locked in. If I buy appliances from an appliance vendor, my data is fundamentally stuck in that appliance and there are no other options for it. It will never be in anything other than that appliance. It's very expensive and very complex to manage all of that data. It just takes a lot of time and people and a lot of pain. Um, understanding your data is a huge problem. You know, storage vendors uh, often love to sell you really big buckets with no idea of what's in the bucket and then are surprised when you have to buy even bigger and bigger buckets. So the lack of understanding of what's in your uh, in your data inside that bucket makes it really hard to make good decisions as a business owner. It's really hard to put your data to use because the data isn't where it needs to be. 
if the data is on premises, but you want to do compute in the cloud, you have a problem. Uh, there's no storage vendor in the world has solved the problem of the speed of light. Uh, customer support. This is uh, this is sort of honestly, you, you could apply this problem to selling shoes, to selling cars or to selling storage. Uh, we applied it to selling storage because this is to us like a, a foundational problem. The products that we sell are at the heart of what our or the, our customers do. So if you guys are making movies, like the data that is stored on Accumulo is at the heart of your business. And uh, everything goes bump in the night. The question is, how well does your organization or your company respond to that? And th that is experienced through customer support. And we wanted to build a company that really had the most delightful customer support industry. And then lastly, hybrid. Um, appliance and other vendors don't want you to really run real hybrid environments because they see that as a threat. And we, we fundamentally believe your data should be wherever you want it to be. And so if you're ready to move into AWS, for example, in order to build a render pipeline, you should be able to do that on your terms when you want to. So what did we build? Uh, we built the, the watchword Accumulo, the central organizing principle is simplicity. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, awesome technology. We got a lot of patents. We got a lot of great engineers from a lot of different companies that build awesome software Accumulo. We're super proud of our technology, but the technology itself is sort of irrelevant. What matters is the experience. And at Cumulo, that experience is built around the notion of simplicity. We make it really, and by the way, simplicity at scale. So for us, what does that mean? It means that uh, our CEO, who is a wonderful, awesome guy, but is a former CFO, he can build a cluster. And that's important to us as, uh, as an idea that you, it should be really simple to build and set up your Cumulo environment that your data services that you were, you need from us in order to keep things simple should be included and we shouldn't charge you extra stuff for that. That uh, data management should be cost efficient because cost is part of simplicity. If something is really expensive, then you have to explain it to your boss and that's complicated. You should be monitored and you should be able to understand what's going on in your data and what's going on in your infrastructure. You should have an API that you can work with really easily and you should only pay one bill. So that's what that's how we think of simplicity at scale and then providing that anywhere. So what is the product? Uh, so for those of you who haven't used Cumulo before, Cumulo is a file data platform, which means we are a thing that you put all your file data in and then you use that file data platform to serve all of your file applications. The way this picture works is it's really meant to follow the life cycle of your data. So, for example, the machines like a camera will capture data directly, put that into a Cumulo system. We call that part of the ingest phase. Then almost all data is transformed. So it is whether that's a compute cloud that's transforming it or an individual user that's transforming it, but it's transforming it from something raw into something more powerful. Then they publish it out to their end users and finally they archive it. That entire life cycle is supported by the Cumulo platform. What you see here below that inside of Cumulo 4, that's the name for our software, are the data services we provide. So scale is how we enable you to build big and fast systems. Perform is the machine learning and intelligence that we use to make sure your data lives on the hottest media or the correct media so that you can serve your most demanding workflows. Aware, that's our UI and our analytics that provides you a deep understanding of what's going on in your workflows. Shift, this is a, a very um, Amazon specific concept. We have a, a part of our product enables you to move data directly from Cumulo into AWS S3 as a native object. And now actually as of this week, you can move data from AWS S3 back into Cumulo and we don't charge you anything for that. We're not gonna charge you a data under management fee. Uh, we're not gonna charge you a tax as it move and we're not gonna, we're not gonna put it in a proprietary format. It's it's your data, you should be able to use it wherever you want. That's particularly valuable for archiving and cost savings, but it's also really valuable for taking advantage of higher level AWS services that assume the data is in S3. Um, so uh, integrate, that's our API. Um, if you ever wanna see it in action, Keith or Fahad can give you a demo real quick, but we have a self-documenting API that will show you all of our API endpoints that you can program against. Everything that's in our UI in our, or in our product starts as an API endpoint. Cumulo protect, that's our data protection concept. Well, those are all the data protection concepts in our software. Snapshots, 
um, replication, all of the stuff that keeps your data safe, but also all the stuff that from user access and um, and uh, outside access, but also from component failure. And then lastly, Cumulo Secure. So we are big believers in encryption. Uh, we offer for free at rest encryption wherever our products operate. And then we offer encryption over commonly available protocols. You, you have to run that product somewhere. So we sell software. You can run it in the cloud on the three major clouds. Today, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about AWS. And then, of course, you can run it in your data center on the most common um, servers out there in the market. All of that is supported by Cumulo Care. That's uh, what makes our customer experience delightful. We have an 85 plus NPS uh, that's like religiously at an 85. We're super proud of that number because it doesn't come for free. It's part of how we build our products and how we support them. And it's enabled by really rich cloud-based monitoring of all your systems. So that's a quick overview of what you get when you buy Cumulo. Fahad, I went pretty fast. Um, did there did I miss any questions no, in the chat that should come up or anything? No, I think I think you were on top. Of, and then you know, I, I like to just you know comment on the NPS stuff. You know, Cumulo has consistently uh, of recent a uh, recent year plus has been able to stay in that eighty five plus range. But there was times where when we started early on, we were really high, and then we went low. And our customers were like, "Here's why we want we want you to work harder for us. We need these things." And we brought that back up. So it's a journey, right? There's never, it's never just like we stayed there. We've had ups and downs, but it's been consistent that the last six quarters are our net promoter score. And I, I even like started to challenge it because I was like, okay, this sounds too good to be true. And let's look at the logic behind it. And you know, we get access to this stuff, and it's really amazing. Our customers really love, really love the experience that they have with Cumulo. So that's uh, that's great stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna shift to a panel discussion. I have five questions that I had written down that I wanted to ask you, uh, folks. But um, looks like we got a few questions in the chat. So I want to like just change this up and run an audible here. Now, Ben, you were just talking about, you know, raw, uh, raw data from a camera and then, you know, ingest and then transformation and archive. There's a question from Bill uh, Garman here who says, are people pushing raw camera data into the cloud? And how does that impact the schedule and time that it takes to move it up? So uh, anybody on the in the panel, please feel free to answer the question. So let me, let me start with that one because we actually have customers who have talked to us about that. And you know, one of the biggest challenges the M and E industry is really facing is that there is a a constant um, video file growth, exponential growth. Actually, you know, you have 4K, you have HDR, you have 8K, soon to be 16K, and these cameras are just producing more and more high quality video. And the ability to process that. When you start to think about what a 4K content actually consume, just from a network bandwidth, it's like 190 gigabits per second. So you have to be able to have a place to process that and work on it. And then, then along comes the whole concept of collaboration, where you know a single studio isn't going to just work on one, one film all by themselves. They outsource that to specific post houses that are you know, really good at you know, adding flames and, and you know, explosions in, in a whole bunch of different CGI. So there's this whole collaborative effort. And, and the, you know, camera, the camera output is the beginning of all of the content creation. And we do have customers today that are, are getting raw content and basically uploading that directly to the cloud. Um, are they uploading it directly to S3 or are they uploading it directly to a Cumulo cluster? It really varies on, on the customer by customer basis, which is why Shift is so powerful for us. Um, it really, depending on what their pipeline is for their, their content and their delivery mechanism, really depends on what they're going to do with that. If they have a whole bunch of built processes that are native to the cloud, a lot of our customers that we're talking to are, are ingesting from on-prem cameras raw footage right to an S3 bucket. From there, their pipeline begins and they can take that data, bring it to a Cumulo system, process all of the, the post-production, like non-linear video editing stuff that requires NFS or SMB off of a Cumulo system. And at the same time, be able to um, also service any applications that are using native S3 access to those files. And then really be able to leverage the cloud to push that content to a content delivery network, um, either for finished products, right, to a service, or to bring that back to a, um, an on-prem system to, you know, to package up and distribute in a different way. So 
you know, there's no one answer to that question, but we are seeing customers really take this footage, um, especially now that content is getting larger and larger and the amount of compute that's required to actually process that content is, is you know, a lot of data centers just don't have that today. And the cloud is just this instant area to get massive amounts of compute. So we are seeing a lot more, um, a lot more people taking that raw footage in. And the follow-up to your question is how do they get it there? There's a number of different ways. Um, you know, we, some customers in New York are actually walking down to like an AWS upload location where they're just taking like, you know, their, their SD cards and they're, they're bringing them right up to their, their places. Other customers are leveraging, you know, some of the Amazon delivery services or they have gateways in their data center to, to move them up. And customers that are actually already leveraging Cumulo, they're ingesting the raw footage into a Cumulo system and either replicating right to um, right to another Cumulo cluster running in the cloud or using Shift to get it into S3. And from there, it, it all goes. So hopefully that answers your question and we can kind of move through that. Um, yeah, I'm not I think there was a, a Derek had a really great comment, not, not necessarily a question, but I just want to repeat it. So he, uh, he acknowledges his great question, especially if you're filming in 4K or eventually 8K. And then he said, I would also extend that sharing using collaboration technology, proxy files may be okay today for collaboration and sharing, uh, but eventually sharing higher res files is going to be needed. So I don't know if you guys had any, um, anything you wanted to add to that as well said. I, I know I'd let David kind of handle that, but like I do believe that sharing high res is, is very valuable. Proxies are good, but the high res content is what a lot of editorial shops are going to need and getting it to the cloud is the first step collaboration becomes really easy once it's there. And, and I, David knows more about the collaborative uh, hooks that AWS has than I do. So we recently had a, uh, a sharing session about data migration, how to get data in to a cloud vendor. So I'll, I'll take off my AWS hat and say for all cloud vendors, there are online ways and offline ways to get data from a local uh, location, whether that's on set or whether that's in a uh, urban area where you have access to vendors that can upload that for you, as Keith mentioned, is one way. Or the cloud vendor itself may have many online option tools to get them up. Traditional FTP-based methods, we have that. We call it transfer family. Uh, a specialized methods that involve acceleration, similar to um, online tools that have been out for years. If you think what is an AWS equivalent to a Sparrow or Signiant or File Catalyst for these accelerator transfer tools, we have a tool called DataSync, and it does that same thing. It, it amp amplifies the amount of data you can move through an internet connection uh, in, in that amount of time by uh, in a non uh, compressed way, optimizing the data transfer using various protocols to get it across. So those are online methods. And then for organizations that are doing this in a consistent basis, um, AWS has a tool, other cloud vendors have a similar tool where it's an appliance or you run software on hardware that you have local, we call our storage gateway. It basically presents the ability to connect to storage in the cloud with an endpoint inside your building and then you provision internet bandwidth between those two endpoints and it's an optimal connection. There are also ways that you can do, uh, if you're consistent with your production and your uploading of data that you foresee going into cloud to be able to get better scale of that production capability, you can do things like Direct Connect, which reduces the amount of internet hops between you and the cloud vendor. So it makes it more of the classic, closest distance between two points is a straight line. We call ours Direct Connect. All cloud vendors have that option. Um, as Keith alluded to, sometimes uh, major urban areas have a common upload point for Direct Connect. You come in with your footage, you log into a console with your credentials, so you're securely connecting into your cloud environment that you've set up, and therefore um, that Direct Connect gives you very high bandwidth, multiple tens of gigabits of bandwidth to do the transfer of very large files in a quite efficient amount of time. It doesn't in, in usually take that long. Um, or you work with a cloud vendor that's in a major urban area. So uh, once, uh, one example I can provide is even though AWS has uh, our, what you would consider to be a cloud uh, endpoint uh, data center is the simple way to think of what a cloud is. AWS manages it for customers. We have them in Oregon, San Francisco, Ohio, and Virginia. 
Virginia is quite close to New York, but San Francisco is not as close to Los Angeles, a major production area. We have a thing called local zones. It's a smaller version of AWS inside of the Los Angeles area. So very close proximity. You can take your data and upload it if you're in Santa Monica or uh, you know Ventura or some of the other production areas inside of greater Southern California. Local zones is right there. And we run a specialized visual effects product that um, we call Nimble Studio that supports Cumulo inside of it. And we run that in our Los Angeles local zone, in addition to our Oregon and Virginia regions in the US and London and in Sydney over in Australia. So you can run Cumulo inside of that for visual effects to, up, to basically get your data in. And in a matter of, if none of those options work, all cloud vendors can provide a offline option, basically a you put the data inside of a device and ship it to AWS. We call ours the Snow Family. Um, other cloud vendors have various versions that they offer for you to be able to, in an encrypted, secure fashion, ship your data into the cloud vendor, and then it would get uploaded into the cloud vendor's storage area endpoint. For us, that's S3, by which, with the new announcement that Cumula just made, they could pull that data from the S3 endpoint where it's uploaded, whether shipped in or uploaded by uh, online methods, and then pull that in to the Cumulo core file system for the ability to edit with it. Why do we like Cumulo inside of AWS? It's about its multi-protocol access, really and frankly, when it comes down to it. Um, your ability as a customer to use the tool you want on the OS you want, whether Windows or Linux, and be able to, in combination of those two file systems and their optimal protocols, NFS or SMB, and pulling access to data from an S3 object into a common file system. Cumulo Core does this. It's why it's a core basis of what our Nimble Studio platform is. So it ultimately comes down to, those are the advantages in cloud. Now it comes down to experimenting with the online options. And we absolutely encourage you, reach out to the cloud vendor. We have teams of individuals that are migration experts, whether it's a one-time migration for an independent film, or it's an ongoing migration need because you're a production facility servicing a studio production and you see an ongoing need to get data in to the cloud if you want to take advantage of what the cloud offers and you see constraints on running it locally inside your data center. Maybe you want to extend or burst into the cloud. And that's one of the things that cloud is really good at is being an extension of your local production capability. When you exceed that, normally you're talking you know, three to nine months to be able to burst out or expand your infrastructure because you need more networking or you need more storage capacity. Now, normally with Cumulo, you can just do that within a day or two, just get the node and burst up and now you're expanding. But if you need more than just storage, if you need more compute if you, and your render farm is maxed, is kind of maxed out and there's a delay with getting more compute components or network components, we are living in an age of COVID and supply chain is very challenging right now. What you can do to circumvent that is burst into the cloud. So work with the cloud vendor, whether it's us, AWS, or another cloud vendor, engage them. Have active discussions around what are the various ways to move data in. There's a variety of options all vendors offer. Exploit those to your advantage as the customer to find the best fit to get the data in. And ideally, they support running Cumulo Core inside the cloud. So then you could run the same file system you use local inside the cloud. The methodologies are the same, the extension of the capabilities are the same. You leverage the knowledge and the experience you have with Cumulo Core to be able to do operations and extensions of more compute, more bandwidth, more, more extended storage capability with our S3. Um, one of the fun things about coming to AWS is I had no idea what it was like to work inside of an environment where we talk about data in terms of exabytes. We have tens of hundreds of exabytes of customer data in AWS with 11 nines of availability and durability because of S3. We've been doing this as Key talks about and Ben talks about having experience matters with your cloud vendor and your storage vendor. S3 just celebrated 15 years in the marketplace of being, uh, you know, at that way, actually 14 years because we celebrated Pi Day uh, on uh, March 14th as uh, celebrating that amount of time that AWS has been doing uh, S3, simple storage service. So I'll pause there because uh, ultimately it comes down to engage your cloud vendor in a discussion, learn and figure out at your own pace what's the right way to use the cloud as an extension of what you already do today. Yeah, awesome, awesome. 
And, and, uh, and uh, I believe you can write a right, right. Oops, I'm here. Oops, I'm here. All right. Sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm still hearing an echo, but there was a follow up. I, I think you answered this question already inside that last statement, but Sandeep asked the question about does this mean in a few years AWS and others will be like uh, a plug in services offering for dealing with bigger and better resolutions? I believe you sort of addressed that, but I don't know if you wanted to add anything on that. So, yes. Keep sure. Um, we could talk about the. When, when resolutions are getting larger, when media assets are getting larger, it's taking advantage of one of the things that we love at AWS is our partners. So it's not just Cumulo, but it's uh, Pickstream for data optimization over the WAN, for moving 4K, 6K, 8K data sets, and other vendors that are very uh, partners of ours that are very good at migrating these data sets, these large payloads into the cloud environment where we have access to an enormous amount of compute that can crunch and process that data and give you what effectively feels like real-time capability to playback and visual effects processing of that data uh, where it comes across as if you had that on-premise. So it's, it's all about getting the data in, and then once the data is in, it feels like you're working with powerful workstations that you would have local in your facility or next to your desk, except in this case, it's in the cloud. With our Nimble Studio, we use the NICE uh, DCV uh, capability to give you that desktop experience of playing back 4K uncompressed media with uh, Cumulo Studio Q that's using Teradici, which is another AWS partner, to be able to give you effectively that compute to storage interlock of high performance playback of 4, 6, 8K uncompressed media, and then take the screen visual display of that and pipe it to your workstation outside of cloud, wherever that is. Um, and Teradici has been doing this for many years. They're a fantastic partner with AWS to effectively give you the visualization as well as the support for Wacom tablets and dual displays to be able to support you know, multi-screen 4K playback from a Cumulo core file system inside of AWS with uncompressed 4K streams coming off of it through an Adobe Workstation platform, leveraging uh, NVIDIA graphics, powerful GTX graphics. And you, effectively, everything I'm describing is what you would build inside your facility, except it's inside of AWS, or it's inside of any cloud vendor that works closely with media customers to understand what are your needs for your plugins, for your workflows, and be able to replicate those workflows and validate they've been tested and that you can have that same experience local inside of cloud and extend your ability to be able to do those greater compute workloads. So moving the data in, that's where taking advantage of local networks, whether you're in London or in Sydney or in Los Angeles region, find an area to upload that data if it's difficult to get a, a very large bandwidth of pipe inside your facility. And then once you have that relationship negotiated, you can take camera ready feeds and memory cards of data and upload that in readily. And there's several of these endpoints to be able to upload that data into a cloud environment like AWS or other cloud endpoints. So uh, investigate locally those upload vendors with large bandwidth pipes, um, especially if you're in a large urban area. Uh, those are very advantageous for you to be able to overcome what might logistically seem like, are you kidding me? I, I've got hundreds of terabytes of data. It would take me six months to upload it over my internet connection. We hear you. Don't think exclusively that your facility is the only way to get it in. Leverage the secure network partners inside of major urban areas and their ability to provide bandwidth to get your data into a cloud. Yep. Um, and we've got a little less than 10 minutes to go. Sorry, Keith, did you want to add something? No, I was going to say, let's let's answer some of these other questions um, that are in there because we are kind of coming up on time. Yeah, absolutely. Some really good ones. Um, you know, I, I'd love to handle this one. So the question was, does this mean in a few years, AWS and others will be a plug-in service offering for us to dealing with bigger and bigger resolutions, which I think you just answered, but what about performance issues do you see with uh, everything in the cloud? That's actually a really great question. And when you start thinking about the cloud, you have to start thinking about it as unlimited compute, right? It's not the static data centers that we're used to talking about and, and processing our, our data in and doing our, you know, our, our render services out of or our, our are editing, you, you really start to think about the unlimited power. It's really computation on demand. And that's what, what makes it so powerful for the M&E industry because 
let's be honest, Hollywood is pushing the boundaries of technology all the time. And, you know, we just talked about 8K and potentially 16K and higher bandwidth resolutions. That means network speeds are going to need to increase to be able to, to constantly be able to push that. So when you start thinking about that, the power of this unlimited compute that's available on demand potentially gets rid of the issues of performance bottlenecks because as you need it, you just use it. And then when you don't need it, you turn it off versus having to consume it and buy it and have it sitting in your data center wasted for only like maybe a third of the day or, you know, one day out of a month. Um, and I, I believe that that's one of the biggest powers that the cloud offers, especially in the M&E space in conjunction with the, the real collaboration uh, piece of, of the M&E industry. You know, you have to think about all of the things that are happening. Hollywood has long been a collection of specialists who just kind of come together and, and create content. And then on-premise workloads are hitting the limits, both in the ability to, to onboard and manage the federation of identities that are out there. And you, you have to be able to easily collaborate. So if you have to take a little bit longer to ingest your, your raw content um, into the cloud so you can start processing it, you no longer have to worry about how am I gonna deliver that content to one of my, my collaborative um, players? Because I can very easily give them access you know, via lockdown roles that are provided through, um, through, through AWS's uh, authentication services. And now I can now get you know, tools to start using that. I can share that. So what you may end up with a bottleneck on-prem um, you know, from a computation perspective or in your render or, you know, how fast it is to upload that data, you may take a little longer to upload it into your processing facility. But once it's there, you get all the computation you need, all the network bandwidth you need and the ease of collaboration. So you, there's always a, a put and a get. And I think that when you start talking about the cloud for m and &E, you really start to, to open up the aperture of what you can do once you have the data there. And I think, you know, when timelines are, you know, I have to deliver this back to the producer of a movie. Um, I need to render it in three hours. Well, time is a variable in the cloud. I know how many computation nodes I need to render. I power those all on. I get it done in an hour. I can preview it, say, oh, this looks good. And I can ship it off. And, and timelines are now something that you can control versus being static in the data center where you only have an, enough compute to get that render done in six hours. So there's a lot of really, really valuable things that are available that become available when you get to the cloud. Yep. No, great. Hey, listen, we've got three minutes left and I have a, a burning question that I want to ask uh, to both Ben and Keith here just to help us kind of wrap this up. But, you know, uh, talk to us a little, talk to the, to the, to the audience a little bit about the benefits of chemo and how can we help them today? Ben, you want to go first? Sure. Um, I thought you were going to ask how I got to be this handsome. That's what that was the <laughs> question that we had practiced. So I was ready for that. But I'll 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 change. We it. always like to throw a curveball. Right? Speak with the yeah, same I, mean, I, I like it. Um, <laughs> uh, and and the answer to that question, by the way, is I just do whatever Keith does. Um, so the okay, how how do we help customers today? So the let's just piggyback on what Keith was just talking about. We have a customer that just very recently generated tens of gigabytes a second of throughput and millions of IOPS from one Cumulo in AWS cluster. And they did that as part of supporting a really large scale render workflow. So if you want to pick up your render pipeline today, put it in AWS and reimagine it so that it can scale elastically exactly the way Keith described, we can be the storage for you today because that's really putting a petabyte of data and generating a million IOPS and tens of gigabytes a second of throughput multi-protocol in AWS today from the file side is hard to do and we can help you get it done right now. And then you can take advantage of all the powerful services that AWS offers on top of that. So that's the first thing is like build a big file system that can scale elastically with your workload. The second thing we can do for you is if, if you are ready, just getting started with Cumulo in your data center is actually an excellent way to set yourself up for getting started with Cumulo in AWS. And the reason is simple. We make any Cumulo file system anywhere on the planet in any AWS availability zone or in, in on any hardware in any data center that we support is a valid replication target for our product. 
And that's what actually in our UI, we call them replication relationships. And we chose that word intentionally because we think of them as independent entities that can have any relationship to each other. So getting started with Cumulo in your data center is actually a really great way to begin to capture that data so you can select what you want to put in the AWS cloud on Cloud Cube for AWS to power that large scale AWS render pipeline. So yeah. those are two ways I'd get started right away. Yeah, well, we're, we're right at the, the, the stopping point here and Keith, I would have loved to have you uh, come over the top here, but I, I believe we have some questions that are here in the chat. We're gonna take those and reach out to you independently if we didn't uh, get some answers. It was great to see, again, the crowdsourcing of questions. Uh, so uh, fantastic. Um, and as Andrew just put in the chat, thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, um, I believe you guys are back at 10, 15 p.m., uh, 10, 15 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, uh, 1, 15 uh, in about 10 minutes for your uh, next session. We're going to have a couple of customers uh, and our CEO, Bill Richter. So something you don't want to miss out on. But I'd like to thank everyone for your time today. And uh, uh, and we'll we'll make sure to come back for anyone that has any leftover questions. We'll we'll reach out to you directly. Thanks everyone for your time. Thank you everybody.